Hello and welcome to some news covering Wilderness Flash events which will be new combat and skilling content coming to the RuneScape 3 Wilderness. Let's cover it, so whenever you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax and enjoy. If you like RuneScape content and want to stay updated with the recent news, be sure to subscribe. It's not exactly common for Jagex to drop a news post on a Wednesday, but here we are. So next Monday, October the 17th, we have the Wilderness Flash events coming to the game and two out of the three new mini quests that will lead up to the Daughter of Chaos quest finale. These new mini quests can be started by talking to Adraste in Falador and will give a new Infernal Puzzle Box reward being the Tier 4 version. The Tier 4 Infernal Puzzle Box will give you 25% more experience from using Brawling Gloves both inside and outside of the Wilderness. The only requirement is to complete the second mini quest being Civil War 2. Now the observant viewer might have noticed that while the Tier 3 Puzzle Box reward remains unchanged, the method of unlocking it has not. Instead of having to kill 144 demons inside the wilderness using your puzzle box, you only seem to need to complete the Civil One War mini quest. Now while you do keep your tier 3 puzzle box if you've already unlocked it, you do need to complete both mini quests to get tier 4. Alright, so what about the Wilderness Flash events? Well, these are members-only events that will run every single hour with a randomized location and type decided by the system. None of these events have a skill quest or combat requirement, but it's very likely that higher stats will be beneficial in some shape or form, especially combat. To start, you probably need to talk to Nickel and the Wandering Ramoki near the Wilderness Wall to take part. If this is required every single time is unclear because the news post does state in a further section that you can just hop over the wall, go to the location and start the event. So I'm going to assume it's only the first time you do these events. So what kind of events do we have? Well, we have four different types of events being general skilling, special skilling, general combat, and special combat events. What skills can you train with these events? Well, you can train farming, prayer, divination, mining, woodcutting, hunter, and fire making. And obviously, of course, also combat. Judging by the description of these events, it seems that they're going to be quite straightforward and simple to get used to, apart from maybe paying attention to a couple of things or a mechanic here and there. So how do you get rewards and what else is there to gain other than experience? Well, to get those, you need to hit the winning condition, which scales with the amount of players participating. And sometimes those winning conditions are time-based, so you have to hurry and fight against the clock as well. Special events can give out an extra reward bag that contains a Draconic Visage or Dragon Rider Boots and Gloves. The KBD Encounter gives a chance at the last Rider's Lore Drop and the KBD Pet. I assume this is going to be useful if you want to complete your log. Then there's Obelisk Shards and a Portable Obelisk. The Shard is basically the Wilderness Teleport System for a single charge. And the Portable Obelisk is an infinite usable version of that shard. The Portable Obelisk is going to be mad quality of life for Wilderness Slayer or anything else where you're teleporting around the wilderness often. XP for the events will be a token, but if a player wins, they will get... Guys, I don't know what it says here, but uh, experience will probably be like a, a lamp token thing, okay? We then have another Wilderness Threat Level counter item, and instead of reducing the Wilderness Threat Level, it prevents it from increasing after killing things or doing the events that increase the Threat Level. That's going to be very nice for AFK Skilling or AFK Slayer. And perhaps the most interesting reward, Alchemical Onyx Enchantments. A Dark Onyx Core will drop from special encounters that can be used to create three enchantments, one for each Alchemical Onyx item. These will be tradable and probably quite expensive. The Grace of the Elves upgrade further reduces the skill prey drain rate and allows you to hold more Porter Charges. The Luck of the Dwarves gives you a chance to skip a clue step. Mm-hmm, that seems pretty good. Gives a chance to double rewards for clues, double caskets. That, that, that seems pretty good. And gives you a clue teleport to the Dwarven Outpost. Now, I don't do clues, but that seems pretty busted. Not only do you have a chance to skip a clue step, but you have a chance to get double reward caskets. You guys already know what this means, right? Gilinor is about to reek of stinky hellhound corpses for the rest of the year. Oh, and there is a third upgrade, being the Passage of the Abyss upgrade, which will allow you to have infinite teleport charges. For those that don't know what that thing is, it's an item in which you can place a bunch of teleport items to have it all in one place. And there's also some new achievements that will come with this update as well. I feel like I need a bit more context and hands-on experience as to how things scale and what kind of time frame these events have before judging it, but it seems like a pretty neat looking update that will be great for money making because of the alchemical onyx enchantment 
and likely decent experience as well. At least, I hope it will be because it is inside the wilderness and the threat level system will, of course, persist. I do fear that this is going to be something that will get still quickly, but if that's really the case, well, we'll have to wait and see. If you're curious about the launch day schedule for these events, that is on screen right now. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a like down below and maybe even consider subscribing. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.